Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minds 365 where I demystify Microsoft solutions for the MSP space. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a custom connector for Synchro in Power Automate with Microsoft. Creating this connector allows you to perform certain actions in Synchro using the REST APIs. So a good example of this may be something like, hey, if we detect this particular security event, I want to create a new ticket for this particular customer. Or if I detect something in Microsoft, like a new file being shared or something like that, I can then take action in the Synchro environment. This could work in the reverse direction as well too, where if there's a state change in Synchro, such as a new customer being created, a new contact being created, you can use that as a trigger and then perform actions within their Microsoft tenant. So it can be really powerful. I'm just going to be showing in this particular demo today how to set up that custom connector and then walking you through a action of creating a new ticket in Synchro and going through that completely. I will preface this by saying it's a little bit more of an advanced video today since we are manipulating with their API and you have to have some fundamental knowledge there. So as far as the prerequisites go, you do need a subscription of Power Automate. So that comes with most of the basic plans. You do not need the premium plan of, of Power Automate to do these tasks. You will need to be familiar with their REST APIs from Synchro, so just some familiar with how to uh, read those and write to those because while I am showing you how to set up the connection, it is going to be more powerful you're able to manipulate that later on. So thirdly there, to that point, I think you need to have a little bit of familiarity with something like Postman, which is what I'll be using here to test the APIs before we pull them back in my own environment. And then as well, we are able to derive certain IDs and things like that that you need to put in as the parameters uh, within the actual calls that we're making. So it's a little bit more advanced in that regard, but if you stick with it, you go through and you actually create this connector that you can use to perform workflow automation between Synchro and Microsoft. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so I'm here within my Synchro environment. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is generate a new API key for this particular connection. The API key is used in our authentication header so that we can actually get into our own environment, call data or post new data within this environment, as well as define the permissions that this API key will have for the calls you might wanna be making. So we're gonna go under here under the admin section and we're gonna scroll down under the API section, API tokens. And here, I've already created one, but you'll just simply create a new token. It'll provide you a value here that is not uh, truncated with the asterisks. It'll be the full value. You'll wanna copy that and paste it into a secure location. And when you do that, you'll be able to define the particular API permissions as well. And the API permissions that you'll see here are relating to the actual documentation for what you actually want to get or post to within your own environment. So today we're manipulating tickets in this particular demo. So I made sure we are able to go ahead and create tickets because that's what we're gonna be doing as far as the setup goes in Power Automate. Now when you begin to play around with this after you've done the initial set connection, uh, you're gonna to want to modify this if you're manipulating other parts of your particular environment in Synchro. Otherwise, you'll get some 401 errors because it's gonna say it's unauthorized. So just keep that in mind. You wanna keep this API key in a secure location and we'll come back to that at a later point. The API docs here, I'll link below, but they basically allow you to uh, identify, number one, the different data points that you can tap into or create new data points off of. And uh, secondarily to that, you are able to see here the actual schema and output of the JSON that you would want to be manipulating in these particular cases. So that might not all make sense right now before I get into some visuals, but I just wanted to cover that briefly here. Now let's pop into a particular environment here. This is, in your case, a customer environment that you would want to manipulate in the sense of hey, for this customer, I want to have these triggers that happen, like I mentioned earlier, like security events or uh, events that occur from SharePoint or Teams or something like that, that then trigger events uh, to happen and actions that happen in Synchro. So with this, we are in what you would say is an end customer environment. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do here is go under the data section and click on custom connectors. And if you aren't familiar with how to get to Power Automate, if you have a subscription, to sign in with somebody who has one and you'll click on the Power Automate tab here. Now you'll see this page where you don't have any custom connectors because you never created them. We're gonna create one from blank 
and you can just call it whatever you like here, but I'm just going to call it Synchro API. You can call it Synchro, doesn't really matter. Here you can upload a logo, so I'm going to go ahead and do that with Synchro's logo. Next, what we're going to want to do here is we're going to put in our host, which is technically whatever your host name is. So I'm just putting this as a placeholder dot synchro msp.com is what you're going to want to put in there. And for me, it's going to be something along the lines of T minus 365 synchro msp.com. And then our base URL, we're going to use this endpoint uh, that we get from synchro. So that's going to be API v1, and you'll just leave it like that. Next here on the security tab, we're going to select API key as our authentication. For the label, you're going to put this as API-key. This technically doesn't matter in the sense of being functional, so it could be whatever you like. I just like to put it as they have it in their API documentation. The second one, though, is specific. You're going to want to make sure you put authorization here. I played around with this as well. probably the, the biggest troubleshooting step I had to take was figuring out how to actually get in this uh, actual authentication API token versus the service here creating its own custom bear token. So this is something that you're going to want to put in there. Um, it, it, it basically allows us to authenticate and make sure we have the correct permissions, like you saw for with our API key to tap into these resources. So we'll click definition next, and this is where we're defining our actions or triggers. So again, today I'm only going to be looking at actions and creating this new action for service ticket creation. But again, if you wanted to create a trigger that's saying something of, hey, I detected a state change in Synchro, you could do that as well too, like, like I mentioned earlier, as far as new companies being created or new contacts or anything like that, or new, new tickets being generated. So in the action section here, I'm going to put in new ticket, and we're just going to say creates new ticket, and the operation ID, this has to be um, no spaces in that case. So we're just going to call it new ticket. And I put an underscore in there just to make sure that works okay. Now we're going to do this where we import from sample. You're going to do a post request here to create a new ticket. And we're following the documentation from Synchro on this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is paste in this URL, which is the URL you're going to call for making this post request. I've gone ahead and pasted this in here, and I'm going to modify it. But essentially, again, this is your prefix of the URL you sign into and then you're pending on the API v1 and then tickets. So again, this would be uh, T minus 365 demo for me. And then for your headers, you're gonna to wanna to do content type because we're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's recognizing it as JSON data. And then that is all for the header information. Our authentication will come from what we did in the security tab. This portion here, you want to grab the actual body from the documentation from Synchro. So let's pop back over there and grab that. Okay, so we're here back in their documentation and I'm going to scroll all the way down to tickets. And we're going to use this post request here. And so you see you have the valid JSON data um, and you can enter all this information or you can make it interval uh, within uh, Microsoft as well, depending on what you put in here. So essentially, all of these fields will show up in your output. So when you create a flow, you're able to basically pass information in or define these, and we'll get into that here in a second, with what you'd like to see. For simplicity here, I like to eliminate some in which I do not need. And that's one other annoying part about this. If you click outside of this or drag too far outside, it will just erase what you've done. So let me pop back in with the information and go from there again. Okay, so we're back here and I've cut this down to a bare minimum just to show you this for demo purposes. But again, you could take that entire output and configure what you'd like to pass into the ticket. There are certain things that you're gonna to need to find like these IDs, which I'll show here in a minute with Postman. But essentially, this is giving you the uh, insurability for whatever fields you want to fill out for the particular ticket. So I'd first recommend finding your use case for this and then determining what those, those would be. 
So we've got all this filled out here. There's a couple that you would need for a ticket as far as mandatory fields, one of which is the subject, the second of which is this body of whatever is going into the ticket. So you're going to need those as well as the customer ID, which I'll pull here in just a second. So we're going to go ahead and click on import here. Okay, and now once we have that, we're going to go ahead and do a couple of different things here to modify our content. The content type here, we're going to edit this and we're going to put in the default value of application JSON. And we're going to say this is required. We're going to say visibility is internal. So this is basically just a saying that we are defining this field and nobody can change it. And essentially this would never change because this is always what we're going to want to have here. So click on back. And then in the body, we're going to want to edit this as well. And there's a couple of fields, like I mentioned, that are required. So customer ID, we're going to want to edit this here. And so with this one, we're going to want to grab the customer ID of whatever environment we're in here. So this is where Postman comes into play. And so within Postman, I might do another video if you're not familiar with how to set this up, but basically allows us to make these calls as well so we can figure out these IDs that we'll need for our particular environment. So in this case, I'm just going to do this for Nick's local IT. That's the ID that I got here. I'm going to pop back into Synchro and put this in as a default value. And we're going to do the required and internal fields again for that. And now you see it's got that little red asterisk on it as well. Some of the things that can get confusing here, the subjects um, of which you see here are duplicated because you have your overall subject of the ticket and then you have your, si your subject of the actual body and comment that you're making as the initial comment. So one of these you might have to edit and decide what that looks like because it is going to be a required field and you might just want to set that as a default value as well. I'll show you a little bit more of that once we get moving forward here. But basically, this is also doing a validation of your JSON and your output as well. So all of that will be here. And when you're ready, you can go ahead and click on Create Connector. And it's going to do this validation here for you. So if you have any errors in your JSON or any errors whatsoever, it'll put that out here before it actually moves on. So we'll just wait for that briefly and come back when it's done. Okay, great, so we're back here. It's created the custom connector and now we can go into the test phase. So we're in the test phase here. We're gonna click on create new connection. And this is where it's going to ask you for your particular API key. And this is where, again, I had to learn this and as far as the process goes, what you're gonna to wanna to do is type in bear, B-E-A-R-E-R -E -E space and then grab your API key that you stored earlier in this video. So I'm gonna grab that real quick and be right back. Okay, so we're back. I've got the API key copied. We're just gonna paste that upon the end of this particular um, bearer space and click Create Connection. And so initially here, you won't see anything come up. You're just gonna to wanna to click this Refresh button and then it'll give you what you just created there. That's something I had to learn from research on the internet so that that was one piece that was a little bit of hard to troubleshooting hopefully saved you guys some time just by referencing that um, so I'm just gonna say test ticket here problem type I'm gonna call it remote support and as you can see these are all the fields that you put into your JSON and you could put in a raw body of JSON as well too if you really wanted to do that otherwise you know it's probably easier if you do it this way where you just have fields you fill out so status I'm gonna say new we're going to say test ticket, and for the body, we're going to say um, this is a power automate test, and then for tech, I'm just going to put Nick Ross here. And so once you're ready, you can click on test operation, and then it'll give you your response here. So it's a 200, which means it went through okay, and it's giving us the body of what it actually created in the particular ticket and everything like that, and I can see what requests we made as well uh, through this, and if it didn't respond correctly, it'll give you like a 401 or a 400 error, something like that, with hopefully some helpful messaging, but if you follow my steps, that should alleviate a lot of what you saw, unless you were using a JSON output that required certain fields that you didn't fill out, like the subject line, for instance, is a common error you might get. So let's pop back into Synchro now to see this ticket. Okay, I'm back in Singer here, and I see that it created my new ticket here for Nick's local IT. So this is a test ticket, 
if I click into it here, this is the ticket number, this is the type that I put in, this is the status that I put in, and down below you have the ability to see the message with the subject line as well. So this is really cool in the sense that you can, you can populate these fields in that particular use case and it shows that we successfully tested. One thing you'll notice here is that I put the tech as Nick Ross, but it didn't detect it here. It could be a use case that you run into from a stale account or duplicates in your test environment or something like that. So just be aware of that. That's something that you want to pay attention to. And essentially, um, what you can do in lieu of that is define user IDs. And I'm not going to get into that for the sake of time here in this video, but it takes a little bit of playing around to get used to all these things. So back in Microsoft here, once we've done this, we can click on Update Connector. And I just do that just to make sure I saved everything that we went through. And we tested successfully, so everything looks good from that regard. And now I want to finalize the video by just showing you this as far as a workflow within the Power Automate environment. So we're going to click on Create, and we're going to do an automated cloud flow. And we're just going to skip over that for now. And so for my connectors or my triggers, I want to search for something that, you know, would want to create something in the sense of a new ticket. So you could say for this particular one, if I wanted to look at that, you could say if a file is, particular file is modified or deleted, I could go ahead and create a particular action as far as creating that ticket goes. There's tons of things that you can use in here to manipulate that. And you can click into this, you can say when a new Teams channel is added, when I mentioned, when a new team member is added, something like that. So there's lots of capabilities that you can do in here. So in this particular case, I'm going to use Microsoft Forms and say when a new form is submitted for a new user onboarding, I want to go ahead and create a new ticket with that. So we're going to pull this in and we're going to select an existing form here or create a new one, which we're going to do, create a new one. New user onboarding. And then from here, we'll click on next step. And from there, we'll select custom and you'll see your Synchro API here. And you'll see your action that you created. So you recognize that we only created the one, but you can create a ton in here for this. The only problem I see is just scalability as far as what you want to see there. And in the particular field, you can see you have dynamic content that you can deliver. So whatever fields are filled out here, you could put in as a subject line, you could put in as the particular status or the body or the technician, whatever it might be. So it's pretty cool that you can do that and manipulate that to actually create a new ticket whenever a new response is submitted. So I'm not going to go through that all the way. That basically brings us to the end of the demo where you can see that we've created a new connector, we've created an action off of that connector, and now we can use it as part of our Power Automate workflow. So that's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys in this particular video. Might do another video on connecting to Postman, if you guys are familiar with that in, in the sense of Synchro API, just so you have access to that. But otherwise, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. And like or subscribe if you have not already to the channel, if you want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.